Well, I'm glad that we can spend a little bit of time reflecting on the Word. And I know uh, we've had, we wanted to create intentionally some extra time with our students today. And uh, so I'm just going to share a short little devotional reflection here on 1 Peter. And what I'd like to do is just organize our thoughts for a couple of minutes around a few building blocks for becoming a healthy missional church. This is part of what we've been exploring in this series. And I just want to lift up four building blocks that I think are significant for us being formed into a church that is healthy and missional. And the first block is what we talked about with this kids, with the kids, is that we need to reflect on what our foundation is. What is uh, the foundation that our lives and our church is built upon? Now, this is a significant starting point in in any formation of faith or formation of a church. I don't know if you saw this video that was going around. There was a viral video of a house in North Carolina a couple weeks ago that got washed out to sea. Did anybody see this video? It was kind of all over. And it was built a little bit too close to the shore, and these waves came up, and someone caught it on video, and it came toppling down and was carried out to the sea. Now, this house was on sale. You can see it on redfin.com, and people are trying to sell it for $380,000. And for a Washingtonian, we're like, that's a good deal, right? (laughs) But it's still a very troubling story of someone who's lost out on this huge investment as this house got washed out to shore. It's this living metaphor for us to reflect on what we build our lives on. And the good news that we've explored, that we see in First Peter 2, is that we do not build our lives or our church on shaky ground. Thanks be to God, we do not build it on charismatic leaders, on our own agendas. We do not build the church on our political desires. We do not build the church on the business practices of American culture. <laughs> The church has one foundation, as that great old hymn said, and thanks be to God, it is not me, and it is not you. We do not have to carry the weight of all the things that are coming at us personally or corporately as a church on our own shoulders, but we are built on the foundation of Jesus. And that's why we come regularly to reflect and remember this foundation. We are built on the love of Christ, the power of Christ. That's what we've been working on with our students for the last two years, discovering what are we going to build our life on. We need to tend to our foundation. The second building block I want to notice uh, is uh, that a missional church is built, sorry, I'm going to just skip ahead here, on tending to discipleship. To discipleship. So the, the key of a healthy church is that we don't simply understand intellectually the foundations of our faith, but that we are being formed or fashioned into the way of Christ, the way of Christ. That we are not just getting our facts straight, but we are growing in our faith. And that comes up in our text today where in 1 Peter 2 it says, you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. I underline that word also because I think it's very significant in this text. It describes Jesus as this living stone and then it says you also are being fashioned into a similar pattern. We are called to become like Christ. We are being built up in our own lives as a spiritual house. We are called living stones. You know, upon first read, I didn't find this metaphor very helpful for discipleship. A stone is just this inanimate inanimate object. But the more I've been reflecting on this metaphor, I think it's actually a very helpful image for discipleship. Think about how stones come into existence, right? A stone is formed over time. And it requires that it faces heat and faces pressure. That's what strengthens this material. And I thought about that as an image for our own formation. That discipleship actually takes time. And for us to to grow strong in the faith, sometimes we need to face pressure. And we need to walk through the various challenges of our life. We've already heard this in the book of 1 Peter. Back in chapter 1, he says, You may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
One of my hopes for our church, which I think we witnessed today, is that we would create a place where we could have time to wrestle with the hard questions of faith. We don't want to rush this process. And as we were reflecting on Confirmation Sunday, we intentionally asked this question of our students and mentors, what are you continuing to learn about God? I think sometimes there's been this false expectation that by eighth grade, you've got to have it all figured out. <laughs> and we want to be a place where students can come and ask some hard questions. We heard some really hard questions posed by our students today. And I walk this through the wrestling with faith. Over time, as we face the realities of suffering and the realities of doubt, that hopefully we will become strong. There's a lot of research that shows that a lot of students, when they graduate from high school, graduate from their faith. Uh, the faith kind of crumbles under the pressure of college life and the reality of suffering. Could we be a different kind of community that would allow that time, allow those hard questions to be asked so that we could grow into a firmer faith? A healthy missional church doesn't just focus on getting our answers right. We ourselves are being formed through the various challenges of life into these living stones. We are called to also grow in the patterns of Christ. This third uh, building block I want to reflect on is uh, the building block of community. This is a very communal metaphor, and so we notice that the you in our text is in the plural, and we are reflecting on this image of multiple stones coming together to be built up into this house. And then the metaphor switches to de describe us as the priesthood of all believers. This is one of our affirmations as Protestants, as covenanters. That ministry is not just done by the religious professionals, but all of us have a place to play in this community. Friends, we are dependent on one another. I think one of the lessons we've learned through this pandemic is how much we need community. When it was taken away from us, we saw some of the effects of isolation. From our very first breath, we have been dependent on someone else. And as I reflect on the scriptures, I do not see that the trajectory is to get to a place of self-sufficiency. That's not the goal of the Christian life. The goal is to support one another, be part of this bigger structure, to play a role in the community of faith. And so I pose that question to you. What role is God inviting you to, to play? How are you called to maybe uphold those who are feeling weak, what is your place in ministry? We are a place of many stones that come together, are built up into this spiritual house. Can you notice uh, just that grammar, are being built? <laughs> it doesn't say you have been built. There is an in-process nature of that, and, and maybe that's encouraging to some of us, that we're always in process in our own discipleship. We're in process as a church. But could we be open to the way that God is continuing to do that work of building us into a community that can support one another and do ministry together? And then lastly, this is just this last building block I want to reflect on today, is that a healthy missional church is not fixed in one place, but we are a sent people. We are sent out in mission. What I love about this image is that uh, these stones are called living stones and that the old temple was a fixed place. It was cemented together, but the new temple is a group of people. And people are not fixed in one place, but we can experience movement. And we've talked about this rhythm of gathering and scattering to be a healthy church. I think that's another lesson we learned through the pandemic is that we had to figure out what church was like for a while without this building. And maybe there was something healthy in that. Now, of course, it is good. We need to, to gather and to support and to worship. But the church is meant to be a place of movement. We're not fixed, cemented in one place. We come and we go. We gather and we scatter. We are a people sent out on mission. And this is where our text ends. These living stones, this priesthood of all believers, is sent out into a world where people haven't heard of Christ and, and we read, live such good lives 
among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. You see that part of what it means to be a healthy missional church is to live the gospel out in the community. This is a a reflection from Alan Hirsch. The missional church will make Christian teaching attractive by living under the very noses of those who have not yet embraced it. We are called to be a sent people on mission. And so this question I pose to you is, where are you able to live your faith under the noses of those who have not yet embraced this message? What's that balance like for you of gathering and scattering? Do we have those connections uh, with people outside the church? I have to admit, as someone who works in these, <laughs> in these four walls, that balance gets a little off at times. I spend a lot of time with church people, and I love y'all. Uh, but what's that balance? Where are those avenues where we can connect with people in our, our workplaces, at our senior assisted living facilities, in our schools? Back in Longview, one year we had a church softball team, and we were terrible, uh, like losing 22 to 1 kind of terrible. And uh, after we did this for a couple of years, we did some discernment. Is this the best way for us to be the church? And it wasn't just because we were terrible. <laughs> um, I've been in churches where that was the right answer. It was great community. It was a great place to invite people. But what we discern and what we notice is that we were ending up having to spend a whole lot of time just with our church community. We were already there together on Sunday and Wednesday nights and Bible studies, and this church softball team was taken up another two or three nights out of the week. And as I was reflecting on what a healthy church would look like, it, it seemed to me that if we're together five nights a week just with our church friends, we're maybe out of balance. Maybe it would be better if we joined our work teams. <laughs> or or where we engaged in other spaces once in a while. And so the next year, I joined my friend's uh, legal law firm's team, and we were also terrible. But it was a lot more fun to just make those connections with people outside the church. I wonder, friends, what that balance is for you, the balance of gathering and scattering. Would you join me as we call upon God, as we close our worship? I'm going to invite the worship team up to reflect on the way God wants to continue to build us up on him as our foundation, as we grow in our spiritual life, grow in community, so that we can be sent out on mission. Will you join me in prayer? God, I I thank you for your word, and I I thank you for this good news uh, that we do not have to bear the weight of all these things on our own, but that we can fix our lives personally and corporately on you, that your grace and mercy is here today, that your strength and power is at hand, the kingdom of God is at hand. Lord, some of us, I think, perhaps are coming just carrying a whole lot of weight as if the world is on our shoulders. Remind us, God, today that we are just ministers. We are not messiahs, that we are just workers. We are not these master architects. That is your work, Lord. Would you build us up together as this spiritual house that would be then a light to the world around us. We call upon you for your help, for your strength. In Jesus' name, amen.